Hello, everybody. This is Move Easy Yoga with Via, and it is October 10th, 2020. We're going to start in the ordinary fashion, lying on your back, supine, knees bent, or your knees could be, legs could be up on a chair. It could be a pillow, actually, too. Just watching your breath. the breath you came in with. Feeling, noticing that your breath is supporting you, the floor is supporting you. The air is supporting you. I love my body. My body loves me. Spend about a, a minute or two focusing on your pituitary gland, which is behind the uh, eye sockets. The optical nerve actually goes out the back of the eye sockets and crosses, and just below where it crosses is your pituitary gland. This is a very nice place to focus on when you're meditating. Finish up, bring your hands behind your head for vagus nerve reset. Interlace your fingers or just stack your hands. This is just to keep your head uh, from moving. And then go ahead and look, bring your eyeballs, shift your eyeballs all the way to the right. And wait for a yawn, a sigh, a swallow, or a gulp. Come back to center. Shift your eyeballs to the left and wait for a yawn, a sigh, a swallow, or a gulp. Come back to center, repeat. Two more sets, right, left, right, left, without my cueing. Finish up with vagus nerve reset. Keep your hands in place and move to 
head ramping. So we'll do six of these, just pressing the occipital ridge into the floor, into your hands, into the floor. The back of the skull slides up the mat, the chin drops. Hold for oh, a breath or two. And then re release and repeat. You have rounded shoulders or text neck, you may want to do this on the hour throughout your day to counteract that roundedness, that forwardness. Finish up. When you're finished, bring your hands uh, to the your hips along the floor. We're going to do square breath, square breathing. So you're just going to imagine a square, a small square, <laughs> and inhale, inhale along one side of the square. A little pause, and then exhale along the uh, next side of the square. Pause, inhale along the other third side of the square and then exhale to return to the first corner. So this is just a way to imagine and structure your breath. Finish up. And we'll go to a hypopressive movement for core and pelvic floor work. And uh, notice that Kathy's heel, the heel, she's dorsiflexed her ankles. The heels are still on the floor, the toes are toward the ceiling. This actually just activates the core. Bring your hands up over your chest in a circle like you're hugging a tree. And then flip your hands, your palms. So the palms are facing the ceiling. Now engage your shoulders and your arms by pressing the palms up toward the ceiling and the shoulders toward the floor. We're gonna do three breaths. And then holding your breath out, no breath for 12 counts. So inhale. And exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Last breath, inhale. Exhale all the way out. Hold your breath out, no breath. One, 
two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Inhale and exhale, arms beside your hips, extend your legs, cross your right ankle over your left, Bring your arms up over your chest again, stack your hands, left hand on top, right on the bottom. Straighten your arms and bring them overhead. Three breaths. So this is a wrist movement. So be sure that your, your hands stay uh, stacked and then your wrists are bent. This is, also, this is a, in addition to everything else of this movement. Three breaths, one, whoops, first inhale, and exhale, inhale, exhale, last breath, inhale, Exhale. Hold your breath out. No breath. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 11, 12, inhale and exhale, Un unravel all of that, cross your uh, left ankle over your right, bring your arms overhead, stack the hands, the right, this time the right hand is on top, bring your arms overhead, three breaths, inhale, Exhale, inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale. Hold your breath out, no breath. I'm going to count to 12. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. 10, 11, 12. Inhale and exhale and come all the way out of that and bend your knees again. And we're going to one set of a, tri, a triplet of supine uh, exercises. The first thing we're gonna do is windshield wipers with a thin brick. So go ahead and put, grab a thin brick and put it between your thighs. And your knees come up uh, toward the ceiling, your heels drop, but the feet are not on the floor. Now just, uh, wipe, windshield wipe, the knees go right, the knees go left, press on the brick. Try to keep your shoulders on the floor. So everything else can move, the hips can move pretty dramatically. And do one more set. And come back, release the brick, drop your feet. We're gonna do one leg at a time. We're gonna do a ha happy baby. It's a modification because I want you to keep, happy baby it allows for and encourages a, a posterior pelvic tilt. And we're not gonna do that. We're gonna do keep the 
pelvis in neutral, just like we did at the last class. Keep the pelvis in neutral. Bring the right knee up toward the chest. Put your uh, hand around the back of your thigh, hands around the back of your right thigh. And pull your thigh forward while you keep your hip or your pelvis on the floor. And you won't be able to get it all the way forward because your neutral pelvis will, will teach you and will not allow you to go forward. So this is just a good practice in becoming aware of how to stay in neutral and still move your hips. Just stay here and breathe and feel the hips staying on the floor. I think you're doing a nice, nice job, Kathy. Says my, intermediate, my internet connection is unstable. Uh, go ahead and switch sides. So Kathy's lifting her head, but you don't have to lift your head on this one. She's lifting her head just to look, um, I think. Um, but, so keep your head on the floor. It's not a lifted, it's not a moving pose. Once you find the spot, uh, you're going to stay there and breathe in that spot. With the, the, the thigh is forward, but the neutral pelvis keeps, keeps it, that, that forward movement of the thigh limited or the thigh and the knee. And just stay here and breathe. Really, this is just a training for the pelvis to stay still while the femur moves, the, the, the thigh bone moves. Go ahead and come out of that. We're gonna do, the next, last thing we're gonna do here is bent knee with revolved abdominals. This is core work. The first thing you do, so your knees are bent just like Kathy's are, feet on the floor. The first thing you're gonna do is uh, move your hips to the right. Well, both hips go to the right. Now drop your knees to the left. And try to keep the knees stacked. That's the trick. Try to keep the knees stacked, the ankles stacked. And then pull yourself back up to center using your abdominals. So this is revolved abdominals. When you get back up to the top, shift your hips to the left and do it on the right. So drop your knees to the right. Keep the knees stacked. If one knee slips, if the top knee slips backwards or forward, just make an adjustment and bring it forward so it's stacked. And then using your core muscles, bring your knees back. Do it again. We're going to do it about four times. Shift. So you have to remember to shift the hips first, then drop the knees. Then come on back up with your core, using your core to bring yourself back. Now, other side and drop. This is a yoga pose called revolved abdominals. You can do it with straight legs later after we, after we master the bent knee version. There's actually a lot of fun variations for this. What you have to remember to do is to shift your butt to one side to allow the knees to drop to the other side. Keep the knees stacked and then use your core to bring yourself up. Okay, um, go and come up to a floor seated position. 
We're going to do floor, just for fun, I'm going to show you floor seated windshield wipers. So you're going to sit with your knees bent in front of you. And your hands behind you and like um, sticks to hold you up. And then from there, bring your knees and feet a little closer if you can, Kathy. And then from there, drop, knees go to the right. Bent knees, both knees to the right, and then both knees to the left. This is, this is a floor seated windshield wiper, right? It's, it's not important that you keep the knees snacked on this one. It's just, uh, just one side and then the other. Yeah, and you can experiment with taking your feet a little wider and then dropping left and dropping right. And you can take them even wider and drop. Finish up and come into a cross-legged position. We're gonna do a, a side bend and then a side twist, which I almost always include in the class, not always, but almost always. Crossing your leg in front of you, taking your right hand out to the side along the mat, the left arm goes up and over. And just stay here. And then bring your elbow forward. Find another stretch. Come on back, elbow comes back, and then the torso comes back. Switch your legs and congratulate yourself. Just take a minute to congratulate yourself that you're sitting on the floor. I would love to write, and I think I will write an article. Maybe I have written an article, but I want to write another one saying that this really the secret to successful aging is to sit on the floor more often. Let's go to the left. Side bend to the left, up and over. Remember your sits bones are uh, even on the floor so that they aren't lifting. If you want to, you can move your head side to side. Get a little bit of a neck stretch while you're here. And then go ahead and move your Right arm forward, right elbow forward. Find another stretch, latissimus dorsi, right along the uh, outside edge of the inside body, the back inside body. Bring the elbow back up. Bring the torso back up. Uh, let's do it again. Right arm slides along the mat, left arm up and over. You're, you're working, um, you're stretching at the QL when you're side bending without the forward elbow. Now go ahead and bring the elbow forward stretching along the um, latissimus dorsi. Come on back, elbow comes back. 
Corso comes back, other side, last side. Left arm out, slides along the mat. Up and over. Stay here. Enjoy the QL stretch. And now bring your elbow forward to add a, a bonus stretch. And bring your elbow up and bring your torso up. I forgot to change, change the cross of the legs that time. I did, I did it twice. You did, you did it? Okay, maybe you copied Kathy and not me. <laughs> okay. Now we're gonna do the side, it's a side twist with the intercostal slide. So starting on the right, we're gonna to twist to the right first. But so cross, start by crossing your legs, uncrossing and crossing, recrossing your legs. Put your left hand on your right knee, bring your right arm behind you like a spider on the wall. See how far you can rotate your chest towards the end of the, of the mat. And once you've found your spine twist, sit tall and then start to move sideways, move your rib cage side to side. Try to keep it out of the shoulders. It's a rib cage move. Unravel all the way back, switch your, the cross of your legs and to the other side. Right hand on left knee, left hand behind you like a spider. See how far you can rotate your thoracic spine. You're really actually moving mostly at the waist. And once you find that, then start to Move the rib cage side to side. Try to keep this out of the upper trapezius, the, the shoulders. Make it a rib cage move. Come on back, go to the other side. We'll repeat this one more time. Cross your legs again, uncross, cross. Remember, you may need to sit on a brick to do this or a blanket. Le left hand on right knee, right arm behind you, the fingertips on the floor. See how far you can rotate your spine. So don't lean, so stay tall. Once you find that, then keep that, keep the spine twist and side to side, rib cage, slide. Unravel, come all the way back, slowly unravel from these twists. Switch your legs. Cross your right hand, put your right hand on your left knee. Bring your left arm behind you. Rotate into a nice spinal twist. When you've found your spinal twist, then start to move your rib cage side to side. So without the rib cage slide, this is a basic yoga seated spine twist, classic twist. Unravel 
people, come on back. Now for the, the stand, go come up to standing. We're gonna do a yoga chair pose first. And then we're gonna do a series of other squats. If you can't do one squat, or maybe I should start with another one to show you. Yeah, let's, let's do this. Um, let's do the chair squat first. Um, this is from a, um, from a seated position. So find a hard back, hard bottom chair, hopefully a hard bottom chair, and go ahead and do it sideways, Kathy, so we can see you sideways. And when I say it's from a chair seated position, it's not exactly that because one option, the option I recommend is not to sit at all. So you're standing in front of your chair as if you were going to sit on it. And this is the one I want you to go back to um, until you find another one in this series, but this one is pretty, pretty available. Go ahead and have your chair a little closer to you. So have your, your uh, legs a little closer to the chair, even closer, I think. Now, okay, you're standing and you're going to drop your butt. So drop your butt behind you and then come back up. So drop behind you. So go ahead and sit on the, sit on the chair, Kathy. I see the problem with Kathy is that she's so short. The yeah, legs are so yeah. short that she's, she, your, yours is not gonna look exactly like Kathy's. No. <laughs> Just so you may be able to sit all the way down, depending on how long your legs are or how, sh how long the legs of the chair are. And both, both of them are factors. So, okay, you're gonna sit. So I want, but I want you, your knees to stay above your ankles. That's the trick. So sit, drop your hips there and then come on up using your abdominals and your thighs to come up to straight and now come down. and come up, abs, thighs, and now come almost down, almost. So you almost sat on the chair and then come up. And let's do that, choose either one, the almost or the, the did it. This is a chair squat. So coming into, so in, when you, whenever you have to sit in a chair, maybe you'll want to do a few of these chair squats first. But remember, when you come out of this, use your abdominals and your thighs. Keep your back flat. Hip, hip hinge, flat back. This is hip hinge, flat back is actually a kind of a variation of a squat. Okay, now. You can stay there and do that, or you're going to do a, um, a wall squat, which where you put your, your back against the wall, bend your knees. I want you to have a sponge ball between your knees, just to keep things, add a little structure. So, Slide your back up the wall. And now slide down the wall until you come into a squat as far as you can until your legs are parallel. You don't have to come any farther than that. And then just stay here and rest. Well, this is not really a resting pose, actually. <laughs> not really resting. And Come on up again, slide up the wall. Whoops, okay. I just broke my door. <laughs> yeah, the door isn't as slidey as a wall, I think. So this is a wall squat. So if you think you're not a, a candidate for squatting, I just think again, because there's lots of different ways to squat. It's still. You may be luckier than Kathy and have a, some something that you can slide on. I'm stable. And then 
There's all sorts of things you can do from the wall spot. You could do some arm work, shoulder work, overhead arms. But we're not going to do that because we want to, I want to show you a bunch of squats today. Come on out of that. And the next one we're going to do is the yoga chair pose, which I was going to start out with. But I thought, well, if people can't do this, then they wouldn't have any options. So now you have a couple of options. Um, standing in good posture, Tadasana. And then the same thing. So, so go ahead and why are you doing that, Kathy? I think, well, so this is just, you, you don't need a chair, you don't need anything. You're just okay. sitting in good posture. Um, and then now, feet forward, bend your knees and take your butt behind you and lift your arms, lift your arms. So it's not even that far down probably. It's more like that. Yes. Yes, this is a, a yoga chair pose. So uh, Kathy, if you can try to get your knees a little bit closer to directly over your ankles and have the butt be the moving object. The butt goes behind you, the arms come up by your ears. Palms can be facing each other. And come on out of that. Use your abdominals as you come up. This is a yoga chair pose. Yeah, one more time. Arms by, by the ears. Lift your chest a little bit, Kathy. You don't have to be, your chest doesn't have to be down quite as well. Lift your arms up by your ears if you can. Oh, and then come on out of this. this this may or may not be available to you. The next thing we're gonna do a uh, squatting. I hope you're still with me on this. I wanted to show you a, a series of squat variations so that you could have a squatting practice and have lots of choices. So stand behind your chair or on, you can stand behind on a, sh a shelf. So, but you're gonna to need to hold on to something. So maybe, Kathy, put your chair against the wall, the front of the chair against the wall. You may not have room, but we'll see. Okay. So the thing is that you're, what you wanna do, I'm worried about Kathy's chair falling over. No, it's against the wall. I just have to move on. Okay, all right, let's see. So you're gonna put your hands on the chair and step back and squat from there using, don't, you don't, you keep, keep your hands on the chair. Keep your hands on the chair. You can go down as far as you can go. Try to keep your knees you know, over your uh, ankles. So the, the body part that moves is the butt. So the knees stay over the ankles and the butt goes down behind you. And let your arms help you do this. Your arms get very long. So it didn't feel stable for you to put your hands on the top, did it? No. No, turn the chair and see if, see if turning the chair the other way with the back to the wall and holding on to the back, see if that helps, or holding onto the seat, either one. But this is, you just find something to hang off of. This is a, this is a hanging squat, basically. You can find, you, you know, if you had a fence railing or um, the back of I the- I can put on the sink and hang onto the counter. Okay, so this is a hanging squat, basically. You just find something that's stable that you can, that won't knock, it won't fall down on you and then and then squat off of it. Okay, and the lap oh, the next one, the next squat is a squat on a block. So find a block and make it long, the length, the high high side, and put it behind your legs behind you and then squat and you sit on the block. So there's a squat. 
and it might be a really nice squat. I, I actually squat when I teach English as a foreign language. I sit on a block just about like this. Actually. And you could sit on a little stool too, same thing. You could sit on a ball, but it might not be as stable. Here you go. You could sit on this. I sit on this all the time. The last squat I want to show you is a just a no block. So go ahead and squat, no block. Some people won't be able to do this. But this is the way uh, people sit in Asia, Southeast Asia anyway, all the time. And I sit like this all the time. Um, whoops, there goes Kathy. <laughs> but you can practice this. This is, this is the... And if your heels are up when you're squatting, try to put something under them, like a towel, rolled up towel or rolled up blanket or a mobility strip, so that the heels are resting on something. Now, if you keep practicing this, at some point you will, this will be a go-to pose for you, or could be. Yeah, good. So that's the last squat. Come on up to standing. We're going to do a back bend at the wall and a spine twist. So squats are really good core work. You, you need to think about engaging your, your core when you're coming out of a squat. But I was reading an article recently that said, instead of doing all the crunches, just, just do squats. That'll take care of it. Put your back to the wall. Standing up straight, feet forward and about hip distance apart, arms up overhead. Keep the knees directly over the uh, ankles if you can. And then use your hands to press your chest out into a back bend, a thoracic back bend. And stay here and breathe. We're gonna be here for 30 seconds. Just allowing, this is a bone building. This is a posture building, bone building. Close. Keep your knees soft. Use your hands to press, create your back bend, upper back bend. And slowly bring yourself out of this and get ready for a side bend at the wall. So right, starting with the right side, right shoulder against the wall, right foot forward, left foot back, bend your elbows and bring your chest, rotate your chest. This is it, that's your spine twist. Rotate your chest with using your arms to help you do that. And just stay here and breathing. Slowly unwind, come to the other side. Left shoulder against the wall, near the wall. Left leg forward. Left shoulder against the wall. Left leg forward, Kathy. The other left. <laughs> and the right leg behind you. And then bend your elbows and slowly rotate your upper body towards the wall. Let your hands help you. 
do the rotation. Stay here and breathe and just know that you're building good posture and actually a flexible spine and bones, uh, bone restoring bone density, bone quality. I'm really excited about the next time I have a, a, bone, a scan, now that I've been doing all these moves with you, go ahead and come back, or at least half of them with you. Let's go overhead again. Back bending at the wall. Arms up. Remember, you keep your knees over your ankles so you're still in good posture. The movement is in the chest. The chest comes forward and you're helping it do that with your arms. Come on back, unravel very carefully. And then let's go ahead and do another set of the uh, spine twist at the wall. So the right shoulder is at the wall, the right leg forward, the left leg back. Bend your el elbows and rotate your upper body. So notice your hips are staying forward. This is actually a variation of a triangle pose. Uh, in, in yoga. I like it better than a triangle pose, but um, the triangle pose actually adds also a side bend usually to it. But this is, this, this is a position where the hips are going in one direction and the torso in another. And come on back. I should probably call it a modified triangle but I probably won't. So left leg forward, right leg back, and then bend your elbows. Put your hands on the wall, maybe your forearms too, and see what kind of a rotation you can create for yourself. Close your eyes and see if you can feel the, the new bone that's being created by the osteocytes. Yay. Come on back. We're gonna do a um, short foot, split stance short foot with core activation, foot to core activation. before we go down on the floor. This is the one, the new advanced foot, short foot that we've been working on. Short, short foot is great for balance and proprioception. And now core activation. We'll start with the right foot forward. First, find the tripod on the bottom of your foot. This is to think of a point at the bottom of the toe, the bottom of the big toe, the bottom of the little toe, and the heel. Tripod. Find that, and now lift your toes, and now engage your abdominals over far, as far down as you can get by your pubic bone. It's the, the transverse abdominal muscle. Engage that, and now drop your toes and see if you can feel the foot and the core. And then release and switch sides. Kathy, have your feet forward, both of your feet forward. 
with the one one is behind. So it's a split stance. So can the left foot be a little more forward? The toes forward on the, I mean, on the right, the right foot. So it's not oh, a triangle oh. pose. No. Oh, this way. Okay, I see what Both you mean. Are forward. Yes. Now, from here, find the tripod on the bottom of the foot. Become aware of that. Lift your toes to, and spread them. Engage your core as low as you can. And now drop your toes and press the toe pads on the floor. And see if you can notice the foot, the relationship between the foot and the core. And maybe emphasize the foot arch first then the core, and then the foot, and then the core. Switch sides. Left foot forward. Uh, right foot. Right foot forward. <laughs> Thank you, now, now we're even. <laughs> right, right foot forward. Uh, find the tripod first, then lift the toes, spread them. Engage the core as low as you can go. And now drop the toes and press the toe pads on the floor. Feel, um, feel the arch in the foot, feel the, the core. So feel the arch, feel the core. Just go back and forth and notice those, both of those things. And then switch sides. Last one, last. Last thing, left foot forward, find, notice the tripod, lift and spread the toes, engage the core, low, TVA, transverse abdominal. Now drop the toes and press the toe pads into the floor and see if you can so bring your attention first to the core and then to the foot and then to the core and then to the foot. And then release and stop and come down to the floor for our closing meditation, 61 point guided yoga nidra. The goal is for you to be warm and comfortable. You can extend your legs, you could keep them bent. Gloria's got her times mixed up. She's coming into the class right now. Uh -oh. Lying on your back. Maybe you'll want to put a towel. Gloria, you're just in time for meditation. Sorry, I think you got your times mixed up. Or maybe you're calculated. Good, good, good thing to catch. I'm going to guide you to pay attention to 61 point body parts, 61 body parts without moving. Starting with your breath, breathing in and breathing out and observing your belly as it rises and falls with the gentle flow of your breath. Now bring your attention and your awareness to the center of your eyebrows, center of your throat, right shoulder, elbow, wrist, right thumb, second finger, third finger, fourth finger, fifth finger, right wrist, elbow, shoulder, center of your throat, left shoulder, elbow, wrist, left thumb, second finger, third finger, fourth finger, fifth finger, left wrist, elbow, shoulder, center of your throat, spiritual heart center, right side of your chest, heart center, left side of your chest, heart center, navel center, center of your pelvis, 
right hip, knee, ankle, right big toe, second toe, third toe, fourth toe, fifth toe, right ankle, knee, hip, center of your pelvis, left hip, left knee, ankle, left big toe, second toe, third toe, fourth toe, fifth toe, left ankle, knee, hip, center of your pelvis, navel center, heart center, center of your throat, center of your eyebrows. This completes your 61 point meditation. Go ahead and start to wiggle and stretch. Bring your arms overhead, extend your legs, stretch and create a space, more space between your pelvis and your rib cage. Wiggle your fingers and your toes. Rotate your wrists and your ankles. Hug your right knee to your chest and then your left. Rock your both knees, hug both knees and rock them from side to side. And then roll to one side using your bottom arm as a pillow. Put the palm of your top arm in front of you on the floor and use it to bring yourself up to seated without rounding your back. Find a, find a probably a cross-legged position. It's not a comfortable floor seated position. Unmute yourselves. I'm gonna remove Kathy from the spotlight. And Choose a gallery view so I can see all of you. Bring your palms together. Press your palms together. Shoulder work. I didn't do a whole lot of shoulder work today. So this is this is your so shoulder sequence. And release them. And now lift your the occipital ridge, the base of the back of the skull. Lift it up towards the ceiling and be, be prepared to nod the skull over the top of the first vertebra, cervical vertebra. Nodding, nodding forward, bowing, bowing even deeper, bowing deeply to each other recognizing and acknowledging the light in each of us and knowing that and honoring that light and knowing that we are all one light. We're gonna close the class by saying to each other, namaste. Namaste. Thank you, everybody. All right, thank you. Namaste.